Twitter. Twitter, you know, a lot of Twitter is just people attacking each other, uh, people virtue sign signaling, and uh, I don't know. Uh, and, you know, sometimes I've gotten drawn into that, and, you know, then I realize what's happening and I just stop. But, uh, you know, I'd only join because of Musk to see what would happen. And, the, you know, there's a trial coming up, supposedly, about the uh, the bot issue and whether uh, Musk has to pay the back out amount, $1 billion, which he's worth about $250 billion, so it's not going to hurt him that much if he has to pay. Uh, but it, ha it has revealed to the public how many fake accounts or spam or bots or whatever are on Twitter. But anyway, so here's a discussion that someone started with saying, well, Christians aren't really good Christians because they're against canceling student debt when Christ gave them the example of forgiving them. And it's like, wait a second, that doesn't, that doesn't compute. Okay, Jesus gave his life to pay for our sins. In student loans, we're uh, canceling someone's debt, but it's about someone else's money. In other words, if I, if I vote to cancel student debt, it isn't, it isn't my money. I'm using someone else's money. It's always easier. You'll notice this a lot uh, in a lot of different places you know, online and different things in real life is that people tend to be very generous with other people's money. And uh, came out in the news that this, what uh, Biden's proposing will cost $24 billion. So the question is, is who pays for that? I mean, if we're saying that's the Christian thing to do, we're, the government, maybe they just print up money you know, inflation is high enough. A lot of people say that the number one factor of a uh, in, way to increase inflation is to print more money. It devaluates the money, prices go up. So, and the second thing is, wh where does the government get the money? They borrow it. Well, who do they borrow it from? They borrow it from your grandchildren and my grandchildren. In other words, they just lop it onto the national debt in, or, or worse, you know, uh, borrow it from some unfriendly con country, and uh, they're like, yeah, let them pay it. In other words, it's like, you know, uh, you're just borrowing. You're, it's really like generational theft. That's how I've heard it explained. So, uh, it isn't automatically the Christian thing to do to forgive student debts. There's a lot to it. If we give everyone ten thousand dollars that had has debt, what about us people like me? I mean, I paid my school loans, as you can tell by my gray hair. That was probably quite a while ago. In 1978, my second uh, thing when I went back to school, got a degree. So it's like, do I get some of it? And you know, are people who have in the past, and let's say people more recent than me, let's say someone paid off their school loans in 2020, did they get the 10,000? Or is it only for people who haven't paid the, it back? And uh, what are gonna be the conditions of this? A blank checks out to everyone? That that probably really gets, works well before an election, okay? But what are the conditions? In other words, should we be giving $10,000 to someone who's you know, worth $200,000? You know, maybe they've got an expensive car, they've got a house, they've got an expensive, uh, you know, they've got uh, a career, and it is possible for them to pay back those loans. It's just going to be difficult, like it was difficult for me to pay mine back. Although, I, I didn't go into debt for something that had no application to the job market later. So... I mean, it would seem that if they're going to do something like that, there should be a lot of uh, conditions. And uh, uh, income-based and different things, total net worth, uh, maybe even saying, well, no, we'll, 
we'll reduce your student debt by 5000 for every year you work in this disadvantaged area. Or, uh, you know, we take some of the people with English degrees, let them teach English in the inner cities. Why not? I mean, have like an American, I guess they used to call it Vista. I don't know if it exists anymore, but the idea of a Peace Corps, but it's based in the United States. So it just seems to me that it isn't the simple issue of, oh, you know, we should just be forgiving these debts because someone does have to pay it. You know, it's funny, my wife and I, my wife gets services because she's handicapped. And uh, we're filling out new paperwork about it. And it's all of this financial stuff. But basically what it means, at least in the state of Maine, if you're my age and your family's getting services, they're going to get it back. In other words, what I'm, the things, my services my wife is receiving are not free. She's borrowing from the estate. In other words, whatever value is left in the state, when we both pass on, the state will be first in line to collect all of that money back. To, you could say to recapture but it's like well maybe why don't we get forgiven maybe we should be maybe the elderly should be forgiven uh, you know so that they don't have to pay back from their estate uh, with again certain guidelines how much the property's worth blah 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 you know I'm not saying car you know just everything do it for everyone but I'm just saying that you know, there's a lot of situations where you could find that would be, you know, would seem to be a worthy cause to cancel a debt. But the question always is, who pays? It's not, again, Jesus gave up his life for our salvation. Jesus did not give up other people's lives for it. In other words, he wasn't sitting back saying, oh yeah, yeah, that sacrificial death thing, carrying the sins of the world. Yeah, you 12, you you go, you go do that. <laughs> he did it himself. So it, it's just, again, I think it's kind of disgenuous to compare the two issues because Jesus did his life and the student debt thing is you being generous with someone else's money, not yours. Tell me what you think. Bye.